Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Wellness Gala free online series, Take Care of Yourself. My name is Lee Grabarczyk of soulfulmandalas.com. I'm an intuitive channel who creates sacred geometry to enhance awareness. So today we're talking about finding your purpose. No small task. I think one of the most important things to begin with here is the understanding of your how important you are. And one of the ways in which I see this is imagine the universe, right? And imagine it's a fabric, tapestry. And within this tapestry is endless detail. There's very little real repeating. It's all this beautiful woven, um, gorgeous thread, right? That just goes on for eternity. And within that, we'll call a little piece of that you. So you are an essential part of all that is. In other words, all that is is connected to you and is aware of yourself as are you aware of it. You, without you, there really wouldn't be a universe or multiverse as we understood it because you play that much of an important role in it. In other words, your unique perspective within the context of your experience is an essential part of the universe's awareness of its being and becoming, etc. So, that element is something that I think is easy to forget. When we're, when we're young, you know, if you see like a bunch of children, very young, three, four, you ask them, who's strong? All the hands go up. I'm strong. You ask them, who's smart? All the hand goes up. I'm smart. And all of that would be true. And then later on, through influences of family and society, things start getting into a state of judgment, comparison. And then you ask at seven, you know, give me a boy of seven and I'll give you the man. Because at that point, a lot of identity has been established. And at seven, who's the smart one? Oh, Tom is. Who is the best at mathematics? Jane is. Who is the most, uh, who's the most attractive, you know? Martha is. And all of these um, roles start coming in and get very, you know, defended. But your true essential self, the thing of you that connected to all that is, et cetera, is still there, right? And, and, and one of the things that comes up for me when I'm thinking about this is uh, this concept of we have everything that we need to do what we are supposed to do or find out what we're supposed to find or everything to fulfill what it is that's important to us. This is true, I believe. So how I look at this is in the terms of, um, let's say that I'm going on a trip right? I'm going to go and I'm going to take this trip. I'm going to go on to this amazing journey. And I needed to have packed within this suitcase, packed within this, this, this survival kit, if you would, the most important things that I would need for that journey. And I had the opportunity to choose anybody in the universe to come in and do it. The most loving, kind being, the highest consciousness of, uh, uh, around. Could be God, could be Jesus, could be Allah, could be all that is, could be Abraham, the Buddha, etc. And I say to them, please give me everything I need for this because I'm going on a journey, not just to a different location, but I'm losing this in the context of I'm going to go through the journey of life. I'm going to incarnate. So think of it as the time before we came into this existence, into this uh, reality, if you would, and we're packing for it. And we're putting in all of these things that we need, right? Sustenance, maps, directions, kind of connectivity. Within all of this connectivity, there's also a special one that's also added, a little mysterious item. And what I would say is that that packed thing, that that sustaining gift, that bit of information, that life um, source, if you would, 
wasn't something that was just packed by somebody else. It was packed by you. And our job is to unpack and discover who we are through the unpacking. It's to discover our identity and our value and our mission statement, if you would, by looking within and seeing the thing that we needed to have to get what we wanted. And that says so much about how it is that we are provided for. And within that bit of preparation, it's one little thing that's been added, one special little item in case of emergencies if this life gets too difficult if there's a trauma or something and it's called love and that little piece makes all the difference so we have all of these things that have gone into our creation we understand our value as a part of all that is etc what we bring to this is a unique perspective our perspective our context within which we see with which we see the world is as important as every other person's because when we really look at our lives from the state of context we're looking at the overall ingredients that came into our existence that made us who we are within the dynamics and within the environment of our creation meaning our evolution as a, as a human being. You know, when I look at, so the seed, if you would, of each of us is equally important. But in some cases where the seed drops and where it is that it falls, the sunlight comes in from a different angle. So if we were to imagine this as a tree and you being this tree, one tree would grow upright, one tree would grow to the left or to the right, one tree might go kind of low, one tree might be a little smaller, one tree might be a little bit larger. But each of the trees adapted to the environments, and as such, each was as beautiful as the only seen within the context, context of its existence. And then people make a judgment about this. And they say, well, I don't like that one. I don't like that. I want that one. But they're still all beautiful within how that is that they adapted. So, so I just want to say that because I think it's easy when we get into comparisons to say that, you know, that one has it and I don't, or that one has got well, some kind of insight and I don't. No, you have everything that you need. Because remember, because you packed it all. You put it all together. And your job is to discover that. Your responsibility, I would assert here, is to discover who you are. To look within. And part of the things that really kind of give indications about what that may be is... What preoccupies my mind? What do I just keep noticing? What keeps coming up in my experience? What is it that I spend a lot of time on? What do I find myself upset? What do I find myself, where is it that I am spending my energy? Maybe it's on science, maybe, maybe it's on music, maybe it's on spirituality. But these are clues. I remember um, really early on having a fascinating interest in this. And even within young children, you can see the rudimentary intentions of what they're doing by what they're preoccupied with. I remember when I went, to, went into Barcelona and I saw Picasso's drawings when he was very young, I think he was seven or eight, in there were the rudimentary parts of his abstractions that he drew later on. They were already in him. Again, we're unpacking who it is that we are by looking within and not by comparing. There is nobody who can be me. There is no one who can buy what it is that I have the sense of being me. They can't transform themselves into me. They can't um, evolve into being me. There's only one me. There's only one you. No matter how hard I try, I will never be somebody else. No matter how much I read about them or study them or do whatever I can, I will never be that person. I'm not supposed to be. There was this great performer who was going on. She was going off to a very famous, and she's going on after this very, favorite, very famous. Are you afraid? Are you afraid to go on? Are you afraid to, to follow up? And they go, 
No. She does what she does well, and I do what I do well. And both of those exist. And that's true. So when I'm looking at the kinds of things that kind of preoccupy and that I'm thinking about, I could almost see them as like a, I see them as like a Venn diagram. So, um, you know, when, with an example of a Venn diagram would be a color wheel, right? Primary colors, yellow, blue or cyan, red, you know, red magenta. And those yellow and blue collectively make green, yellow and red make orange, green and red make violet, right? So we have these kinds of combinations of, of colors and then collectively where they intersect, we have this one common thing. So in a Venn diagram, as I'm thinking of it here is, what are the interests that I like and what is common to them? Or where is it that they intersect? So for me, very early on, I loved Spirograph. Loved it. Thought it was great. I loved reading about spirituality. I loved going and doing mechanical drawing in high school. Thought it was great. I loved learning about the meaning of basic shapes, basic forms, basic icons symbols. Found it fascinating. I love psychology and the way that it connected. I love um, uh, Jung's uh, Man and His, uh, His Symbols. Great book. I loved, um, you know, all of the, you know, geometry and um, um, other kinds of like um, uh, studies of esoteric. I love philosophy and the things connected to uh, culture and 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 Taoism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Eastern philosophy, etc. So if you were to imagine each of these as a circle, and they're all kind of connecting, the one place where they intersect is sacred geometry with mandalas, because in that are all of the kinds of things that I love. That's the common thread. My thing is to unpack the case, look at the different pieces that keep coming up, and then look at the intersecting point to those. And that intersecting point is for me that. Because within the sacred, uh, within my, the mandalas, the sacred geometric forms that I draw, you can see it online, are the interpretations, because then I get into the spirituality, the representation of self through these kinds of geometric forms, et cetera, et cetera. And I find all of that, like, captivating. And so that is, for me, the purpose. Now, but the purpose, though, is evolving. Purpose isn't something that, you know, like, I got here, I'm done, it's great. No, it's a process. I'm discovering who it is that I am, or I'm discovering what it is that works for me as an ongoing investigation. I remember there was a line from Zen and the Art of Motorcycle, which you know, that line said, it's better, to, it's better to travel along happily than to arrive safely. When we get attached to something, when we're doing something and we become attached to it, when it's all about the doing this, this creates stress. And then the strategies of these things that connect to that puts energy on the process that then builds into it like, well, why don't I have it now? And why isn't it looking this way? Why is it that this isn't happening? These kinds of strategies really, these kinds of strategies really create problems. By the way, I'm, I'm well of the technical issues, but we keep moving. And um, so when I'm, when, I, when, when I'm attached, when I'm attached to those strategies is I wake up, when I get into trouble. But when I'm in a state of discovery, when I'm like, kind of looking into the thing that I'm doing. I'm doing it from a perspective of adventure and allowing. I'm allowing myself to simply experience what it is that I'm doing. I'm allowing myself, I'm giving myself the permission to be good at this. I'm allowing myself the permission to investigate this. I'm allowing myself the permission to be talented, to be, ta I can allow myself to be talented to be able to connect to it. And when I do this, when I allow this, the universe basically says in turn, here you go. Here you go. 
your interest in these topics and your simple love of what it is, is all that we needed. And now we're gonna give you everything that connects to that. This is that concept of asking and it is given. By my willingness to just say, you know what, I'm gonna allow myself to succeed in this. I'm gonna allow myself to experience this purposefulness that I so find so satisfying. Life just lays it out and says, here you go. Let it happen. So that, 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 that process then becomes one that I just begin. So now as I'm actually involved in this process of communicating what it is that I find interesting, which is connected to my purpose, and gives me a certain kind of energy. This is another thing that is indicative of it for me. If I'm doing something where I feel like the energy is dropping, where I don't feel empowered, when I feel exhausted, if I feel worn out by something, if it's not really kind of giving me a certain kind of um, an energy, a bur uh, like a burst, a, a kind of a happiness, if it's not creating joy for me, if it isn't doing that. Now, granted, things can sometimes be difficult, but if the overall issue is always is becoming like hard work, something's gone wrong. And at that point, when I do get into the flow of it, because that's how it feels to me, when I'm in alignment with the kinds of things that I love, the kinds of things that I value, the kinds of things that I know are true, the kinds of things that really matter to me, it just works. And that kind of connected energy is empowering because there's no resistance. There's no fighting anything. I'm simply connecting to myself, which I understand as having value. I recognize my voice as an individual one that has value too, because nobody has my point of view. I'm the only one who has this experience, and I'm willing to share that experience through this intersecting uh, loves that I have, that then I then express, and then I allow this, the rest of it to just roll out the way that it does. Another big part of this too is, does this honor me. Or in another way, when people look at different kinds of um, actions connected to their friends, one of the big things that comes up is a betrayal. You know, like, I can't believe that person betrayed me. I can't believe my boss did that, or my friend did that, or my spouse did that, blah, blah, blah. All of those different kinds of things are very powerful for people because I believe that it really is a way, it really shows us how we feel about that for ourselves when we do it. And I would say that your purpose, when you find your purpose, your purpose is the thing that honors you where there is no betrayal, where everything, again, as I said, lines up where you are complete in what it is that you communicate because it's true for you, it gives you power, and it's exciting to communicate. The other thing about this, too, is that in this allowing, is this is very intimate. You know, the kinds of things that people, I know a lot of times people will be doing something and they'll be very, very, very excited about it and privately, but they don't want to publicly display it because they're concerned that some people are going to judge it. And why is that? because it matters to them. So one of the things that is actually in a way kind of ironic is the thing that I really, really love is the thing that I might be reluctant to share because I don't want people criticizing it, but I'm the only one who can do it because I'm the only one who has this unique perspective and I love it and who cares? And I guess this is something that I can identify with because frequently uh, looking back on my life, things would be happening. I wouldn't step up. I would say, oh, you know, I can't. But privately, I would be saying things about it. And then I wouldn't really voice my opinion. And that energy got bottled up and created problems. But I gave myself the permission. I simply allowed myself to, to, to speak about the things that mattered in that way. And in that way, finding my purpose. Which has basically led me to this circumstance. So... When I am honoring myself and when I'm really empowering myself, the universe goes, yes, that's the thing that you should be doing with your life because that's the thing that we packed for you because that was the love. Because it's not that we're just discovering who we are as we go through life, as we unpack all of these things that we set aside for ourselves in the future. We're also discovering how to love ourselves in our own process, to look at our mistakes with this sense of, forgiveness, 
to look at the errors and the things, and maybe we started later, and maybe it wasn't done just right, or maybe it wasn't perfect, and all of those judgments that come in about this. And we just say, you know what? It's okay, because I love myself. I got that that was what I needed to get where I am, and I'm okay with that. I let go of that. I let go of my judgments about myself so that I can shine. So this allowing is really, really at the heart. Allowing, trusting, trusting the process. I think one of the things that is so true in my experience that life is constantly telling me, trust your process. Trust it. Trust your value. Trust your connectedness to all that is. Trust your inner wisdom. Trust your inner voice and your inner intuitive abilities. Connect with that and be fearless about it. Because one of the most important things that I can do is to model the behavior that I so value, be the change I want to see, right? And to do that, I have to be able to, I can only give what I have. And I can't communicate the kinds of things that really, really matter to me if I haven't really been doing them. This is probably why I didn't do this 30 years ago. And also, even within my flaws and my faults and my stuff, that's part of what makes me lovable. It's my humanity. It's my human condition. And how beautiful it is to accept that, love that, celebrate that through the successes and failures in the ever-going process of experience. I remember a very good, talented man telling me how he had an epiphany. He was on a mountaintop of success. He looked down and he could see the roads going down and up and down and up. And he simply rode those experiences with a sense of wonder and joy because he wasn't attached to any outcome. He simply was enjoying the trip. So with that, I want to thank you for watching me on the Wellness Gala free series here. Take care of yourself. Um, please visit wellnessgala.com for more information and please stay well. And also uh, next week I will be talking about healthy boundaries, especially with all of the things going on this day. I think that may be topical. So again, I want to wish everybody a great night. Thanks again. Bye-bye.